Hi everyone, I hope you guys are having a great day. I feel like we are having request week here on my channel. We did what's in my bag, we did the long wearing makeup, and another request I saw over and over, and it really like filled my heart that you guys really enjoy this, is shop my stash. I think these videos are really so important, whether you're a YouTuber, whether you're a makeup user, um, taking the time to dive into what you have, realizing how it stacks up with newer things you've purchased, maybe realizing there are some things you could declutter in this process, but keeping all things kind of relevant and in the conversation as opposed to just being hyper-focused on new, new, new. I love a shop my stash moment. Yesterday I came up here and I just shot my stash for every part of the makeup routine. And I'm shooting this on Thursday. It is the last day of school for my girls. I feel so emotional whenever it's the last day. I don't remember feeling this way as a kid, but the girls are like, I'm gonna miss my teachers and they have built such good relationships and it's just it's kind of sad to see it in. I love summer and all that comes with summer but you know and it's just the thought like I won't have a second grader anymore I won't have a kindergartner anymore. Jumping into the shop my stash I pulled this out from NYX and it's the plump right back with electrolytes plumping serum and primer and I grabbed this and I was like oh yeah this reminds me of the fact that Biddy I think has been dehydrated for a couple of days here just seeming so groggy like just wanted to lay on the couch she fell asleep early anyway in the course of an evening gave her a lot of fluids and and she also like her appetite didn't even seem to really be there and it would make you think maybe is she coming down with something but she was showing just no symptoms of actual like sickness one way or the other like not respiratory not like a stomach bug and she gets a little bit of a fever going I know that can be associated with dehydration goes up to bed and like sleeps like an absolute rock and gets up early the next morning like I'm here in the makeup room doing my makeup it's in the five o'clock hour and she pokes in and she's like mommy I think I'm all better. <laughs> I really just think it was dehydration. So then I sent her to school yesterday. They've been having these active days outside, like spending a lot of the school day, I think, outside and uh, just a ton of activity. I just don't think she's been replenishing really like she should. And I've maybe not been pushing it enough when she is home from school, but we really pushed it that night and then the next day as well. And she really gets along well with body armor for some reason, like Gatorade is good too, obviously, but body armor has pulled some people out of some places in this house over the last uh, year or so. That's what I've noticed. Also, look what's missing back here. That's right. What is that? It's a uh, ceramic cactus. The bunny has been moved. I was up here at a time when I could do something about it and I did it. Um, I pulled out this. This is from Say and this is the Slip Tint Broad Spectrum SPF 35 Tinted Moisturizer and I have it in the shade 4 and I thought, you know, it's been a while, a long while. I've got a lot of lightweight things that really, you know, they're definitely not of an age to be decluttered from my collection but I feel like I haven't been using them enough and I'm thinking like every day I wanna pull for a new like tinted moisturizer just to reassess. Get that swiped all around. I'm in the mood for the e.l.f. Duo complexion brush as usual. This shade is a summertime color. Has this stuff always had kind of like a natural smell? <laughs> like it doesn't smell like anything's gone bad, but it's just like kind of a earthy smell. Yeah, this is so glowy and juicy looking on the skin. Now we did use that primer as well, which gave us a little added moisture, but this just really, really glows. And I'm getting that added SPF. Uh-oh, somebody's awake. You need help getting your pillow back up? Anyway. Super duper glowy. It adds just light coverage to the skin. You know, I'm feeling the summeriness with this. Then I just kind of thought, let's pull out that concealer too. That's also from Say. It's the height isn't called Hydro Beam. When I opened this the other day, it seemed really, really thin. Like almost like some little weird separated oily thing was happening at the top. I don't know. Let's just work with it. I also pulled out, oh, that's right. Some of this, my Rare Beauty Brightener, because I thought that could you know, additionally brighten things up and also I don't use it very much. This is the opposite of a buck foot. It's a little pointed doe foot and not much comes out on it. A couple little blemishes there. Okay, and then within this zone, I'm gonna take my Rare Beauty. This is in the shade Light, okay? This little brightener that has that kind of cooling ball thing. And we'll just mingle in a few. <laughs> 
little spots there. Now we spread, spread and mix, mixing on the face. The face is the palette. <laughs> I think that's going to be good. My the shade of the Say Concealer is definitely like an exact skin tone match. It's not really that brightening at all. So the addition of the Rare Beauty, I think, is helpful right now. Okay, we are luminous. This coverage of concealer that's happening right now, you come away feeling like you've got a medium coverage, really, on the under eye. Like, we stepped it up from where the foundation was, but it's still a very lightweight kind of vibe in the coverage department. In the moisture department, we are juicy. <laughs> juicy, juicy, juicy right there. Okay, cat kind of opened my door, so I'm going to handle that. I pulled out this from e.l.f. This is my Halo Glow Setting Powder in the light pink shade, which I hadn't really reached for in a bit. It's really good. Um, it was, when I got this, I actually got this little powder puff, and then I kind of started working in with these a little bit more. And I like that they're not as thick. And I'm going to take some of this light pink shade and work that in on the under eye. We really need to be set. It's going to be a warm day, sunny day, and I want the hydration. And I don't want to be quite as tacky as I feel right now. This is a really good little powder for brightening. And it doesn't only come in the light pink shade. Of course, there are other options. Taking my little Morphe brush and just... You know, we dust away slash blend in where it feels right there, but I do feel nice and smooth on the under eye. And then I pulled in another powder. I pulled in my L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear, probably thinking that this Say Slip Tint is such a light coverage. Maybe I'd want a little more coverage and a little more staying power on top. So this is that um, powder foundation that I have in True Beige. And I'm just going to use this not with a puff. We, you know, we're not looking for really that much more coverage. I just want the texture of my skin to feel a little more set. So I'm using my BK Beauty 107. Not a super dense brush, just kind of a standard powder brush. And we're setting all those areas really outside of T-zone and under eye, because we just did that. Really very little on the brush. I don't feel like we're stealing all luminosity from the skin, but we're just making it feel like, yeah, that this is probably gonna hang around all day. Frankly, I do think tinted moisturizers and powder foundations tend to make a great combination. Okay, here's what the complexion's looking like so far. I'm really pleased. I'm still picking up on a little bit of gentle glow, but at the same time, I, I can trust that I think this look is gonna wear well for me. Oh, well, for my contour, I pulled out my Huda Tantour, which remember when I just, this was it for cream contour. I love this stuff. Um, I have it in the shade light. Seriously, it's so good. They still have that stopper. Let's see how creamy it is because this was just, oh, it feels great. It still feels super creamy. I'm going to go into it with my Sephora 56. Just going to go straight to the skin from the brush. What a good tone. Yeah, this may not be new on the market, but who'd have had it down? <laughs> that shade is so nice. And again, the softness. It's like they pushed, they smushed an M Cosmetics So Soft stick down into a pan, you know, into a pot. And if you're saying, M, you just put some powder on. What's going on? You're going on with cream now? Well, I, it's, it's really no problem. I'm working in thin layers. I'm not like zhuzhing around the whole skin in a really harsh way. This will be fine. I'm having complete ease of blending with this stuff. It's so nice. Such a rediscovered moment here. See, look at that. Mm. So my mom, she got the girls like some little snack bags for after they did their dance performances. Was that last week? Like we were talking about how like it's kind of tradition kids get flowers after stuff like this. But I thought, you know, they're not really paying attention to the flowers and it's just kind of a hassle to have them there. And it's hard to keep it a surprise that they're getting them and really it's just for a picture. And I was like, what they really want right after they perform, they want snacks. And so she put together nice little snack bags that had like cookies and candy and all kinds of things they like. And then she gave me and Bub quite possibly the most decadent snack mix you can get. It was full of honey roasted peanuts, peanut butter M&Ms, peanut M&Ms, some kind of sugar coated almond, like so good and pure like 
richness and goodness. I'm really trying not to eat after um, dinner time, but last night, like my eating schedule's kind of off. They had cheer and whatever. I allowed myself a little bit of that and boy, was it good. Okay, I pulled out this from Kosas, medium golden bronze baked bronzer. Does their bronzer look different now? Are they packaging something in yellow or am I going crazy? But this has a little luminous look and I thought, well, we could just layer that on top of that matte cream bronzer I just put on, right? I'm not wanting to go too strong with it, but I will take it up like a little higher. That's the thing about powder bronzer that's so much easier, it feels like, than cream, is when you want your bronzer to actually hit where the sun hits, it's easier to make that move with a powder product, don't you think? And just like graze it across the skin like I'm doing right now. You can see a little sheen in this. I haven't used this a lot. When I got into Kosas Revealer big time, I remember I felt like trying everything and it's brother by Kosas. So I got a lot of things at that time, including this, I guess. Okay, I look glowing. This was a subtle move because I think it, it gave a little bit of bronze, but with the lightness that I'm applying it, it's mostly showing the glow. I don't want the forehead looking patchy. I think it's okay. Oh, then I did pull out two blush options. Okay, here's what I was thinking. I thought about going cool pink. Um, I got out my e.l.f. putty blush in Bora Bora because I feel like I haven't used the putty blushes in a long time. Got this cool pinkness, and then I thought I could layer on top of that if I wanted to with a powder blush from the Balm Will Powder Blush Quad. There's some gorgeous blushes in here and I really wanna use that highlight too. I used this one recently. Actually, this isn't so much of a shot my stash because I use this and I love this Worth the Weight highlighter shade. It's so pretty. I swear it's got like a little tinge of pink in there. It's, it's so good. I'm gonna grab this brush. I'm gonna go right into my product here and let's get a nice little cool pinky flush. Oh yeah, yep. Let's bring the putty blushes back. It's not like they're an ancient product, but I just haven't been reaching for them. Oh yeah. And this shade is so fun. This shade is just really working well in this texture. Like creamy, light. I love how these are just completely, you know, they're a cream blush, but e.l.f. made that term putty, and it was like they changed the way people were looking at it. Oh, putty. Oh, okay, it's putty. It does have, like, if you just feel it, on your finger, it feels a little more cream to powder than some things, but isn't that cute? I like that shade. Moving right along, we're going to Will Powder, and I'm thinking of taking this shade called Dedication. It's got a little shimmer. I can tell I've used it quite a bit. And, oh yeah, that's hitting the light a bit more. See that difference? And it kind of just, everything just looks smoother on that side now that I put that on. Is anybody going to see the new Little Mermaid? This weekend, I'm thinking we need to. Little end of the school year celebration. Look at this. Absolutely. That is so fun and I'm feeling like it's definitely highlighter optional skin right now, but I've already committed to the thought of using this. So we're gonna do it. Did anyone else, when they heard this was a Shop My Stash, pause the video, shop their stash, and now we're all doing it together? Let me know in the comments. Okay, getting a little bit of that highlight on. I think I might've gotten a lot. This is so pretty. I would highly recommend this blush quad if you're looking for something to try from the balm. Oh, so luminous. Taking a little bit up here so the whole face gets to feel a little bit lit as opposed to only the cheekbones. It's always a little weird when the only glowing place on the skin is the cheeks. Oh my gosh, and if you look up close, the interesting thing is, is it's hard to actually see any shimmer bits, little particles and stuff. It's just smooth. I'm actually like going over this just with my Morphe under eye bullet brush, just to see if it tames it a little. It's okay, like let's be glowy. Let's just be glowy. You know how sometimes we do these looks and I'm like, well, I didn't really think of anything for the brows. The brows are like forgotten and not exciting. Well, I picked something out today. We're doing Dip Brow from ABH and we're also doing the e.l.f. Brow Lift, okay? So that's that jelly kind of stuff. ABH has some of that as well. I got my dip brow here in medium brown. I've used this a good amount. Got a little e.l.f. eyebrow duo brush. I want to have that spoolie to kind of rake things through. I haven't done a straight pomade brow in a while. I don't want it to get too dark too quick. Like this is cream. This is an opaque creamy color going in. Keep it fluffed. Keep it light. 
Yeah, normally this is when I just settle down and tell you what I've been eating for lunch lately or something. And I've got full focus on these brows today. What have I been eating for lunch lately? Oh, I made a massive pasta salad that I learned about on TikTok. It's kind of like a sort of an Italian sub in a pasta salad. And we've been eating on that. It's got like fresh mozzarella in it. It's got some ham. It's got a little bit of salami in there. It's like a meal in a pasta salad, okay? Tomatoes, cucumbers, banana peppers. As the dressing, it's just real simple. You use the Olive Garden salad dressing, just the Italian salad dressing on that. And it's been so good, so delicious. Bub says it's his second favorite pasta salad that I've made. See, I like making pasta salads a lot. So a lot of them are coming through my feeds and I'm very into it and very much taking note, but I made something, I think it's called cowboy pasta salad, and it actually had ground beef in it. The sauce was like creamy barbecue, I don't know. It was good. For me, pasta salad, if you're trying to kind of be healthy with it, like it gives you the satisfaction of having that pasta dish, like, oh, I want fettuccine alfredo, oh, I want spaghetti and meatballs, but I don't want to take down that many carbs all at once. We have these little, you know, side serving cups for a side dish, and you just put a little bit of that pasta salad in there. It kind of scratches that itch for pasta, but your main thing was maybe like, well, in, in this case, Bub smoked a pork shoulder over the weekend. Just eat some of that or have some chicken breast or something. And you're not eating like a full meal's portion of the pasta, but you're still feeling like you had some. Call this pasta salad mind games. I think we did pretty well with the dip brow. I was really paying attention on this side. I went into total autopilot mode on this side, but I feel pretty good about it. Now we have the brow lift. And e.l.f. does make a certain applicator for that. So it has a spoolie, like you go in to this product, pick it up with the spoolie, and then it has this flattener side, which I don't use too aggressively because I just feel like my brows are thick enough as is and I don't need them pasted down really. But I pick up some of that brow lift gel and you can immediately feel that hold. Like, I kind of like boosting up the brow in the front a little bit and then doing a real gradual lay it down as they come on back. The pasting, the pasting. Okay, picking up a little bit more. It feels weird to go into something with your spoolie, doesn't it? You'll know if you got enough on there. You'll feel it. It immediately grabs the brow hairs. Um, is anyone else getting so bored with this storyline on Bold and the Beautiful with Hope and Thomas? And Thomas is now like Thomas 2.0. He's a real good guy. And Hope has feelings for him that she's kind of burying. But I think it's starting to come out and something's starting to happen between Steffi and Liam. I'm thinking old feelings are going to come back there. I don't know if anybody can tell what I did there. It's very subtle, but the brow is a bit fluffed. I need to like trim my brow hairs to make them make sense more. But then kind of laying down there. Paste. Paste. They really feel like they're holding. That stuff is cool. I deeply am shopping my stash for, oh, let's just use Milani eyeshadow primer. Lids are primed and I pulled out a palette I really have not used in a while and it is still available if you see me using this and you're interested. It's from Lorac. I opened up a drawer that had some Lorac palettes. My mind is just telling me go to Lorac and I went for Fairy Tale Forest. This is what it looks like. And I do recall thinking that, you know, this shade was kind of a draw for me and then it didn't show up super intensely that color on the eyes. But these are nice textures. They also still sell Noir and they still sell the Soleil palette if you're into, you know, other color schemes. This one feels a little bit more on the cool side, but we do have some golds lurking down here. We've got a row of mattes here and here. Let's dive in. Let's set this look up. We could go kind of pinky if we wanted to. I do have this cool pinky cheek. I am going to go to this dusty rose that's right there. We'll start using that in the crease. All the rock shadows. Pretty. Nice and soft shadow. I mean, you might tap off a little excess. This, these are the original, like, soft eyeshadows, don't you think? Remember Lorac Pro 1, Lorac Pro 2, those giant palettes that they were releasing, like, at holiday time and other times. You know that phrase, when cardinals appear, angels are near? I must have been just walking with the angels, surrounded by angels yesterday, because I saw so many 
cardinals. We had multiple cardinals feeding at our feeder at one time. I was driving, a cardinal would swoop past. I would happen to look toward a tree that I was going past and I see a cardinal in it, like constant cardinal sightings. Okay, I'm taking, this is a little Morphe M332, like sometimes I'll just grab that to blend things out. Going into that beigey color that's right next to the dusty rosy mauve. And why don't you switch up your background sometime? Well, it's moments like this when the sun starts to come up in late spring and we start to see that pretty morning light just starting in the outline of the cottonwood. Also, and this might be a weird thing, I think it's comforting to see someone surrounding. Anyone who does their videos and their video is giving you an indication of what's happening outside around them, like, I like that. I like seeing out someone's window. I like seeing motion and movement of the tree leaves. Like, I just, I, I like that. I don't know if that matters at all to anyone else. There's really so much shimmer right here. Uh, what else can I add to my crease to make it a little richer? I guess I'll go down to this brown. Down to the brown. That's going to darken things up without really adding a lot of color either way. Getting that in there. Going to need to probably blend that with another brush. This is kind of intense. Kitty cats need to go in for a shot today. They're pretty good travelers. They're not quite as antsy as other cats I've had in my life. Okay, looky there. Nice. Then just blend on the edge. Can I help you? Let's talk it out. What are we sad about? Um, my last day of school. Gonna miss Mrs. Webb and all the friends? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I love you. Love you. The kitten just came into your room. Just snuck in. What are you gonna do today at school? I'm gonna play outside. They showed a picture of a bouncy house. <gasps> yeah. You think there might be a bouncy house today? Yeah, well, everyone sat in the whole wide world. Oh, We're gonna have a fun summer, though. Yeah. We're gonna do some fun things, aren't we? What? Oh, bunny ears. <laughs> She's a double bunny ear. <laughs> Mommy needs to finish this eye look. Bye bye. Bye bye. Cheek. Adios. 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 I do want to use these pinky shades because I feel like I got a little pink cheek. Ooh, I got an idea. Let's do some of this and some of that. They're like the two funnest shades in the palette. Let's go there. Last day of school. This emerald green. As I recall, it comes off pretty dark, but maybe a little fun layering will help it sing. It's not that bad. Like, I, I can see that. It's like a forest green, but they've mixed in a splash of teal. Oh my gosh, Bub and I forgot that there was a new Ted Lasso to watch last night. I have cried more during episodes of Ted Lasso this season. I think if you apply this really light, you are going to think that's a barely there green. But I mean, I am, I'm painting her on today. And I can see it. I'm going over like half of the lid space with this Morphe flat brush. Pretty. Um, we're thinking about kind of getting it to the crease. Small pointed, same shade. Just a little bit of that color in a different way, you know? This brush is gonna help it sheer out a bit, extend out. Yesterday I used my Too Faced Natural Nudes palette, one of those where I didn't love it quite at first, but I came around. And I swear, every look I do with that just turns out so smooth, so nice. I'm always like, wow, I did that, you know, afterward. Can anybody tell that we have just literally moved this shade around a little bit? Moving it around, blending the edge just a little bit. It is looking pretty with some of that rosiness on the outside. I want to really work that in some more, that first crease shade. This is Wispy White Sigma E36. Wispy White is the unofficial name that I named it. It's just a real light little easy brush for these moments where you're wanting to lightly let that shadow rise. Now, my plan was to take this shade here, which it looks like, as I hold it to the camera, doesn't look so pink, but as I turn it, it also has a golden shift. So who knows exactly what's going to take the lead as this goes on to the lid. But I want to see that splashing in from the inside. Oh, this is fun. 
it's really fun. Immediately as it overlaps the green, I'm trying to let it do that in a really sheer way. It looks a little more gold there, but different as I turn my head. Immediately pink though. Pink is the um, leading color factor. I can feel a little flake in this. Um, you want to do sort of a pressing pulling motion. It's not bad, but I think fallout tendencies. So just watch that. Really satisfying, actually. I'm gonna press over it with my finger. Look at that, that's a fun little combo. Anybody else have this palette and tried doing the pink and the green? Good. Okay, cleaning off the brush. I'm gonna go to this really icy shimmer right here. Just get a little bit of that and pop it on the inner corner. I will say this appeared to be the highest rated Lorac palette on Ulta's website currently. That's how I made my decision. I was like, let's just go with the one that had the most good ratings. And also I just hadn't used this in a long time. This is a fairy tale forest on my lids. I guess we haven't really gone under the eye. A little bit of the dark green gonna come back. And remember this is green shimmer, but we're shearing it. We're going for kind of like a, a murky little lower lash line here. Yeah. Okay, there we are. There's my eye look. I didn't pull an, an eyeliner today and I don't think I even want to use one. Look, the shadow is the main event. The most like overlooked mascara currently is probably my CoverGirl Exhibitionist. I have decluttered fairly recently and I don't have a lot of like just old stuff hanging around. So we're gonna use the Exhibitionist. That's gonna be the lash today. I think my lip is gonna work really nicely with this look. It's pink. This is a really good mascara. This one's definitely got some age on her, but I'm not scared. It's just probably been a couple months since I opened her up. See that? Nice immediate length and thickness. So good. It's the Exhibitionist Stretch and Strengthen. Did I say that? I really like the brush. It kind of loads the lashes immediately. Makes you feel a little bit like superhero in that way. Look at that. Fantastic mascara rediscovery there. Making me feel like I want to repurchase a new one soon. I should probably put a little Cali Ray come hell or high water. I feel like this will be pretty. Kind of framing on the lower lash line. I have some really long, like, outer lower lashes, and sometimes they just get too much. I was just seeing, like, can this build even more? And it can. Like, really seemingly endless building with this exhibitionist stretch and strengthen. Thickens them up, too. Loving. And this whole look is making my eyes look more green as well, which is cool. For the lip, I pulled out a lipstick from Rimmel, a lasting finish lipstick in the shade Soft Hearted. It's kind of a mauve -y, cool pink. I really let the blush lead the way, and I just thought, let's pull out a lip that can come in and look good alongside it. Mm, really creamy. I purchased this not too long ago. Look at that. Mm. And then I grabbed a gloss as well. It's my Milani Keep It Full, and this is in the shade Blush. This does have some opacity to it, but it's not going to be like your most opaque thing. I thought it would be perfect, mm, and it is layering up. Oh yeah. Cooling sensations. I'll take that. I feel like this look turned out so good. It was so random though, wasn't it? Like the Say products for coverage. Don't you feel like the skin looks at a glance really nice in terms of coverage? But our whole basis for the look was a fairly light, like tinted moisturizer and concealer. We worked in some of the Rare Beauty for added brightness. Some of my favorite rediscoveries, I loved using my Huda Tan Tour again. I was really pleased with the brow experience, actually. The e.l.f. Putty Blush. This little palette from The Balm. I'm gonna be using that some more throughout the summer. And Fairy Tale Forest, like, there are some fun combinations possible in here. I love the pink side by side with this green, but if you wanted to sidestep some of that, like, you could do a pretty warm look here with this dark terracotta, which is kind of interesting. It's deeper than some of the real orangey ones, and I picture that splashing in with some of these tones, and that would look so pretty. So I'm wanting to use that more now. Thank you guys so much for your time today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it, and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.